And two leading advocates for the poor are sounding the alarm over the growing numbers of New Yorkers who are struggling to put food on the table. Welcome back to Inside City Hall. Just like previous economic downturns, the current recession has hit the poor the hardest. In fact, a host of recent reports are showing a steep rise in poverty all around the country. And here in New York, the Bloomberg administration is saying that the numbers actually show extreme poverty has fallen in the five boroughs. My next guests beg to differ, and they are sounding the alarm about the large portion of city residents who are struggling to put food on the table every day. Joining us now to talk about poverty and hunger in the five boroughs is Jennifer Jones Austin. She is Senior Vice President for Community and Investment at the United Way. And Anthony Butler is with us. He's the executive director of the Brooklyn-based advocacy group St. John's Bread and Life. Welcome to both of you. Good to see you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, let me start with you, uh, Jennifer. When you hear that the mayor, mayor saying like, well, extreme poverty is not as bad as it, as it ha had been, um, is, is that at least a little bit of good news? Um, the mayor and his administration have done a lot over the last several years to try to improve the situation for many families who are living here in poverty in New York City. And so I imagine that, you know, because of their efforts, they are very, very much on top of trying to do the best that they can. Uh, poverty remains a very big issue here in New York City. And uh, poverty is evidenced by homelessness, by hunger, uh, the number of people who are uh, poor, working poor, poverty is still a big issue. And let's do what um, we often fail to do, which is define poverty. We're talking about $22,314 for a family of four. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we talk about extreme poverty, we're talking um, about about half of that. Right. So we're talking about $11,157 right. for right. a family of four, which is uh, almost unimaginable yeah. Yeah. for a lot of our viewers. Yeah. But, but put, the, put that in some context. I mean, I, I think you hit the, the nail on the head. Try to live on $11,000 for a family of four in the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's virtually impossible. I think one of the uh, errors in this in saying that um, the serious poverty is diminished is it's not a fair mark of our city. These poverty uh, measures are made, they're national measures. Mm -hmm. So if you're living in rural Mississippi, $22,000 is mm -hmm. much different than if you're living in Chelsea. Right. right. Um, and that severely impacts. The other thing is folks who are tremendous, who are at the bottom level of poverty, if you will, mm -hmm. can't get any poor That's to some right. extent. What's happened is the, the next group up, the people 22,000, 30,000, 40,000 who have lost their jobs, they are the people ending the ranks of poverty and not being able to meet their kind of basic needs of food and shelter and mm -hmm. medical care. And they are the right. folks who are using As our well resources. As well as the people who, who are employed, yes. but mm -hmm. uh, are receiving minimum wage mm -hmm. and uh, expenses. You know, housing is expensive here in New York City. Mm -hmm. Food, healthy food is expensive. And so even with a job, people are having a hard time making ends meet. Let's take a look at a map. This is a map we made up using uh, some of the latest data. And it shows, um, this is extreme poverty is where you see the red patches. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at that and see that in Upper Manhattan and in the South Bronx, mm -hmm. in North Brooklyn, mm -hmm. as well as in Central Brooklyn. And then mm -hmm. in all, you see little dots elsewhere, like in uh, some parts of uh, the northern shore of Staten Island, uh, extreme poverty. We're talking about $11,000 mm -hmm. for a family of four. Um, uh, for a lot of people, it's hard to imagine that there are that many people. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in those red areas, 40% of the population is right. dealing with extreme poverty. Yes. Um, so t talk a little bit about what happens when it's sort of concentrated in that way. In one particular well, when it's concentrated, the communities are struggling. You know, they're having a hard time, uh, families. Uh, you'll see in concentrated areas that the education system in those communities is struggling. You'll see that the neighborhoods are struggling, the housing uh, is not the best. And so when you concentrate it, it just kind of has this like ripple effect, this multiplying effect. Mm -hmm. I want people to know that, that it's not just those who are living in extreme poverty though who are suffering right now. There are people who are living on the edge. There are the working poor. Mm -hmm who are having a hard time as well. And so we need to make sure that when we talk about this issue, we don't limit it mm -hmm. to just those who are without jobs, those who are without an education. There are people mm -hmm. who are educated. There are people who are wor working, who are having a hard time making ends meet. That's been our, uh, the largest growth over the last year. 34% of our folks, which have grown in our food pantry, are folks who are working, who are domiciled, who have fa and families, intact families, and can't make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And um, when you talk about hunger, which yeah, we, so, we need yeah. to, um, 
uh, I think for a lot of folks, they assume that food stamps, which if, you, if you've never dealt with the program, you really don't know what it is or mm -hmm. sort of what it can or cannot buy. Mm -hmm. Is food stamps enough for a family of four to live on? No. If you're poor enough to get food stamps, is that enough to keep you fed so that you can no, stay it's alive? Not. No, it's not. Um, that's why we've had if you, um, emergency food systems in New York's uh, state have given out between this year and last year over 22 million more meals even though we've got a penetration rate of food stamps of about 65, 70 mm -hmm. percent, much higher than other states. Mm -hmm. They just cannot make ends meet. Um, it's, it's, it's a fractured um, system, mm -hmm. a particular right. system that's responding to hunger. Mm -hmm. United Way of New York City uh, partners with about 500 uh, community-based organizations across the city who serve as food pantries and soup kitchens. And consistently we're told by them that there are individuals who are receiving food stamps but also are coming mm -hmm. for emergency food services because they cannot stretch the food stamp dollar or the other dollars that they would have available. The United Way also did a survey and you asked uh, several hundred, about 800 adults. Mm -hmm. um, New 700 uh, mm -hmm. individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about um, what they thought about uh, about hunger and poverty and some other issues. Let's take a look at some of the findings mm -hmm. here. And I thought this was striking, the percentage of people who had difficulty paying for food or groceries. Mm -hmm. um, asking, you know, have you or a family mm -hmm. member? This is a, roughly about a third mm -hmm. are choosing between food and other expenses or having a hard time uh, right. uh, paying for their food. That in a city like this, a city of this size, is a little startling. It's very startling, but it has a lot to do with the, the economy, mm -hmm. the recession. Um, and just that people are in crisis. There's not enough money to put food on the table. They're having to choose between healthy food options and lesser uh, quality food options. We found that two out of five people are telling us that they have to make the choice between cheaper food that is less healthy than, than healthy food products. Mm -hmm. And um, what we were most interested in learning is what is the experience of the New Yorker? Not just those who are accessing the food pantries and soup kitchens, because we believe that more people need to be aware of the issue, need to be involved, need to be engaged, so that we can advocate for everybody mm -hmm. who is in need. And so if we just sit and talk about, mm -hmm. or just talk to the people who are in need, we're not gonna know right. what the average New Yorker feels or believes or, or wants to do. Well, there, there, were, there were very striking numbers in, in the survey about who among the people you surveyed said that we, they would be willing to write a letter, go to a meeting, Absolutely. help educate people. 50, Overwhelming oh, right. numbers. 84%, 84% 84 of the people who we surveyed felt that hunger is a, is a, is a serious concern. 50% believe that it's a major concern here in New York. And 78% told us that they believe that the government, beginning with the federal government, has a responsibility to make sure that everybody has three, at least three healthy uh, meals on the table. And so um, there is government's role, mm -hmm. but we as individuals and sen as citizens can do more to like really just like bring this issue home and let the, the government know that more needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Food stamps can't be cut. Programs such as the Emergency Food and Shelter Program, uh, the Hunger Prevention Nutrition Assistance Program mm -hmm. that is funded by the state. These programs have to be in place mm -hmm. to feed people. Let me... Um Speaking of the government, let's mm -hmm. listen to what Mayor Bloomberg said on his radio show this morning when some of these questions mm -hmm. came up. Mm -hmm. And I want to get your response to this, Tony Butler. Let's, mm -hmm. let's listen. I mean, nobody's going to let people starve on the streets. I think we've, as a society, decided that. You want programs that encourage people to work or reward people for doing what we ask them to do. That's a very old issue of it's, the so-called yes. the deserving poor, the right, undeserving right. poor. It's, a, it's deeply felt in our culture, in our city, and by our mayor. Mm -hmm. Um, does that complicate things when it comes it to... It does complicate. I mean, I would say publicly it's completely wrong. It's, it's, a, it's a vestige of kind of our, our Protestant that poverty is equated to sin. Um, we don't hold our financial institutions to the same um, uh, type of standard. People are poor because of significant economic structures. One in five New Yorkers mm -hmm. uses emergency food. 1.8 mm -hmm. million. Just to give you an idea of kind of the cost, too, I don't think what's calculated in there. Um, Progress America uh, just finished a study that, um, through Harvard and through Sodexo, a major uh, food concern, that shows a, the cost of hunger in this country in med just in medical costs mm -hmm. is $183 billion annually wow. because of hunger. It's $12 billion in educational deficits that hunger cause causes, uh, attention deficit issues, things like that, missed school. Mm -hmm. So there's significant cost to hunger, societal costs. I think as Jennifer's alluding to, this is a communal problem. Mm -hmm. This is not a problem of lazy people not being able to get enough food, not working. This is a communal problem that's fracturing our society and needs to be dealt with as a communal issue. New York City does more than a lot of cities. There, there's no doubt 
out about it. New York State does. Uh, uh, Jennifer remarked about HIPNAP. One of the reasons New York State is below the national average in um, uh, indicators of hunger, which are uh, low, uh, low weight of children, anemia of children, um, short stature of children and obesity is because of our commitment to nutrition and to hunger. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, That's right. And when you don't have enough money to put food on the table, you start to make uh, choices that are less healthy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you talk about the cost of hunger, but then you add to that the cost of health uh, costs associated mm -hmm. with obesity, diabetes, and other diet-related diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually administer uh, a the Hunger Prevention Nutrition Assistance mm -hmm. Program here in New York City. And uh, as part of United Way of New York City's efforts to make sure that we get healthy food on the table, we require that all of the food pantries and soup kitchens that we work with that receive HIPNAP funding at least provide, provide at least 15% of the food mm -hmm. purchases have them go to healthy fruits and vegetables and low-fat dairy products. Okay, that is going to be the last word. So folks, when you hear more, when you hear from the United Way as we approach the end of the year, uh, take a look at the materials. You've gotten Absolutely. a sense of what they're doing. Absolutely. Thanks so much, uh, Anthony Butler, oh, for uh, giving us some perspective as well. Thanks for the time. We are going to take a break.